I heard it said at a Final Four one time that, boy, it was a powerful moment that every, every young man, every young boy needs three things from his dad. He needs approval, he needs acceptance, and he needs affirmation. And, you know, when I heard that, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing a decent job as a dad. My boys are, they're, they're healthy, they're walking strong, but boy, I, I, did, a, I did a quick 180 and, and started to reflect on, wait a minute, that's not just for my sons, but that's for the young men that we get the privilege of coaching, that we're called the shepherd. My dad was, he was my role model. I wanted to be just like him. I even slept with his scrapbook, pictures of his high school and college days under my pillow. He played at the University of New Mexico and he would always tell us that the only way we were going to college is if we got a scholarship, so we better practice. And practice he did. Basketball became Richie McKay's passion. There was an infrastructure set in our family, whether it was healthy or not, that you had to compete to win. And, um, and I feel like that was healthy in a lot of ways. I, I acquired some disciplines from that. McKay's competitive drive led him to a top Arizona junior college before he eventually landed that coveted scholarship at Seattle Pacific University. McKay's time at SPU developed more than just his jump shot, it also strengthened his Christian faith, and he found a mentor in head coach Claude Terry. He was such an unbelievable man. He's the first man that I'd ever met who actually read the Bible that was sitting on his desk. I was someone that really didn't grow up with my dad in my home. My mom and dad were divorced. So I wasn't used to men you know, speaking to me the way some coaches did. And Coach Terry was different. He, he would talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. He would understand my shoes that I'd walked in. McKay's time at Seattle Pacific set a solid foundation for what God had next. My college coach, Claude Terry, said, hey, I think you'd be good at this coaching thing. Why don't you apply as a graduate assistant at the University of Washington? And uh, I said, okay, I'll do it just because I liked him. But I didn't really think of coaching. But McKay had a knack for it and eventually landed at Bradley University as an assistant. While there, he was encouraged to seek out legendary Wisconsin Green Bay head coach Dick Bennett for basketball insight. It turned out to be a pivotal moment in McKay's career. I sat down with him and started taking notes and what was supposed to be 15 minutes turned into about an hour and 45 to, to two in two hours. And I, I, I'm telling you, it marked my coaching career because um, it, it gave me a, a sense of encouragement that here's a man who has done a lot with just a little bit of talent, was an underdog, but he held on to who he was in Christ and his faith. He was, he was a Christian before he was a coach. Coach Bennett established the pillars, if you will, and you'll see it in a myriad of, of locker rooms across the country, Division I, Division II. And I remember picking up those pillars and they were humility, passion, unity, servanthood, and thankfulness. And I thought, man, if I ever become a head coach, these are gonna be near and dear to my heart. Shortly thereafter, McKay would get his shot at Portland State, a school resurrecting their basketball program. I got the Portland State job because no one else wanted it. We got a chance to really just sell our vision and you know, guys were coming just because of our faith. And it was, it was really neat to be able to, to birth a program from scratch and, and have the young men that we have believe in us enough to, uh, to come and, and play and serve us in a mighty way. It was really quick success, and um, I'd be less than honest if I, if I didn't say my competition um, problem was, was rearing its ugly head because I wanted more. I wanted to go to the NCAA tournament. I wanted to, to be like Coach Bennett. So um, I probably didn't enjoy the fruits of our labor as much. I was ready to keep climbing the, the worldly success ladder, but, uh, and that continued on for a couple of years or a couple of jobs after that. So I'm kind of on the fast track, if you will. I'm at Colorado State, and we had had a pretty successful two-year stint there. And we came home after a big win, and my dad called me from California where he lived. And he broke the news to me that, that he had stage four cancer. The news hit me like a ton of bricks. And he didn't know how long he had, but he didn't think it was more than a year. Following that news, McKay took the head job at Oregon State to be closer to his ailing father. Shortly after arriving, his father's condition worsened. McKay would get one last chance to make an eternal difference. 
I got to see him uh, before he died. And, uh, my dad was a great man, but he didn't know Christ until the last day of his life. And, uh, and I got to be a part of that. So, uh, but what he did for me in terms of instilling values <clears throat> and, uh, and, and the way he treated people was um, something I'll, I'll take to my grave. And his decision in, uh, in the midnight hour to accept Christ really gives me the, you know, the confidence that n no one's exempt from, from God's mighty hand. And uh, my dad lived a, a good life and was very well respected, but it didn't, he didn't live a, live a complete life until the last day when he made that decision. But in the midst of heartbreak, a new opportunity would arise. To get that call was like, oh my gosh, if my dad could see me now. McKay was handed the reins at the University of New Mexico, his dad's alma mater. It was a dream job, and McKay was reinvigorated. The Lobos would make the NCAA tournament in his third season, but something just wasn't right. I kind of lost my way. I felt so much pressure to, um, to make the McKay name great you know, because of my love for my dad and the love for the program that I started maybe taking a shortcut or two in who I recruited or even in my own daily life, I, I started to become more isolated. I got on an island and I, I, was, I was living for the praise and the approval of man. After six seasons and despite a winning record, McKay was let go. He moved on to Liberty University relishing the chance to excel in a Christian environment. He would win quickly, leading the Flames to a record tying 23 wins in his second season. But God had other plans, and it began with a call from his good friend and new Virginia coach, Tony Bennett. I thought Richie would you know, hire me someday. I never thought I'd have the opportunity to hire him. I keep hearing that we are to go and serve and instead of being served. I had had some phenomenal assistants who had served me, and Tony just asked that we could go and build something special, and all throughout the Bible you see God sends two by two, because it was really hard to leave Liberty, and it was hard to go back to being an assistant coach. He really did humble himself, and he said, I want to come. He, he felt called to it. He said, I want to come, and, and he, he used the word a lot, serve you. I want, I want to like share with you the things that I've learned. It was really a powerful time. Our relationship grew and um, he helped me immensely. It was different. It, it never once looked like, especially in those first two years, when we were just an average team. I didn't think it was going to be, uh, I didn't think it was going to look like this. Yeah, but it was better because it taught me how to legitimately serve. It got me back to center again, if you will. I got a chance to be much better in my home as a dad, as a husband. And I got to reinvest in players and really kind of disciple them in more of a one-on-one -on -one setting. But after six seasons in a rebuilt UVA program, it was time for McKay to come home. He was rehired as Liberty's head coach and now brings with him a fresh outlook. Maybe two months into the job, I started to realize what this campus really reflects. It's the body of Christ. And I, I think it's an honor to be a part of that. None of us perfect, absolutely none of us, but we're all intentional in striving to be able to accomplish something bigger than ourselves. And to me, it's what it's all about. As he builds the Flames program, McKay can't predict how many banners they'll hang or nets they'll cut down, but he does make one promise. If you go through the doors at the Vines, you will see a team that is fun to watch, that represents who we are as an athletic department, as a university. And for that, I love that. To me, it's the foundation to what's to come.